uploading several files of child pornography on his Google account. That is according to jail records. 37-year-old Jonathan Ryan Nicholas was charged with five counts of possession of child pornography. An arrest warrant affidavit states that the investigation into Nicholas started in March of 2021. And that's when the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children's Cyber Tip Line received reports about a Google user uploading multiple files of child porn. The Office of the Attorney General of Texas investigated the reports. Nicholas was eventually identified as the suspected user of the account. Keep up to date with all of San Antonio's top news, weather, and so much more by clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. And once again, thanks for watching KSAT. All right, so what we're about to watch is a parole revocation hearing for this San Antonio man that um, that the news reference just cited. So they caught him for having five uh, images of uh, on his Google file. Now, he was busted um, in 2018 for soliciting a minor online and was on parole. And now this is his revocation hearing. And then after the revocation hearing, we're going to skip forward to his actual sentencing date. Thank you so much, Gabriella, for forwarding this over to me. And uh, please do like and subscribe and check out my main channel with over 500 parole and parole revocation style hearings. Um, put the description in the link below. All right, court is calling 2018 CR 3520W, State of Texas versus Jonathan Ryan Nicholas. Now, parties announced for the record for the state. Denise Garcia from the state of Texas, Your Honor. Defense. Alex Shar from, uh, from Ms. Nicholas. And are you Mr. Nicholas? Yes, Your Honor. All right, just one moment off the record. I need the stamp for probation. Oh, no problem. No, 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 that's the wrong stamp. The one for probation. Thank you. And in the box, I'm gonna need to, excuse me, in the box, you all need to move down on that end if you're gonna confer. All right. Mr. Nicholas, I'm going to show you what's entitled Motion to Enter Adjudication of Guilty and Revoke Community Supervision and State's Motion to Supplement Pending Motion to Enter Adjudication of Guilt and Revoke Community Supervision. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. Are you the same Jonathan Ryan Nicholas who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2018 CR 3520W for the offense of online solicitation of a minor meet with intention uh, for sexual conduct? on April 4th, 2018 for a period of five years. Is that you? Yes, Your Honor. All right, State. Um, yes, Your Honor. State will be waiving and abandoning the new number ones. We're proceeding on the remainder, remainders. Violating condition number 15A on or about the sixth day of December, 2022 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Jonathan Ryan Nicholas, Nichols, failed to comply with instructions of his court-ordered sex offender treatment program and that the defendant failed to progress towards reasonable treatment goals in violation of condition number 15A. I, uh, how do you plead to that, true or not true? True. State? Violated condition number 15I, on or about the sixth day of December, 2022, in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Jonathan Ryan Nicholas, did then and there fail to comply with instructions of their of the Bear County Community Supervision and Corrections Depart Department sex offender program and that the defendant possessed an unmonitored smartphone in violation of condition number 15I. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True. Violate condition number 15I on or about the sixth day of December 2022 in Bear County, Texas. The defendant, Jonathan Ryan Nicholas, did then and there fail to comply with instructions of the Bear County Community Supervision and Corrections Department Sex Offender Program and that the defendant possessed an unmonitored smartphone in violation of condition number 15I. How do you plead to that, true or not true? True. Violated condition number 15L on or about the 26th day of March, 2021 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Jonathan Ryan, Ryan Nicholas, 
that then and there failed to comply with instructions of the Bear County Community Supervision and Corrections Department sex offender program, and that the defendant used an alias or fictitious name, namely Honey Badger, in violation of condition, condition number 15L. How do you please that true or not true? True. Violate number 16, on or about the sixth day of December 2022 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Jonathan Ryan Nicholas, failed to comply with the instructions of his full order sex offender treatment program, and that the defendant failed to progress toward reasonable treatment goals in violation of condition number 16. How do you plead to that, true or not true? True. Violated condition number 18, on or about the 26th day of March 2021 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Jonathan Ryan Nicholas, did then and there fail to report an alias, Honey Badger, to their appropriate law enforcement agency and failed to register said alias with that agency pursuant to Texas Chapter 62 in violation of condition number 16. How do you plead to that? Sure. Uh, just one moment. Is it a violation of 16 or 18? Because that's listed uh, as condition number 18, and then it states a violation of condition number 16. Yes. Oh, we're off the record. Uh, but Sean, do you see what I'm speaking about? Yes. Okay. Number eighteen. All right, so uh, we're back on the re record. State, is there a motion? On um, this, um, Your Honor, yes, the state. Um, the motion is to change um, number sixteen in violation of condition number eighteen to to the, the number eighteen. All right. Is there any objection to that from the defense? You see where it is. This, this is what oh, 18, 18. No objection. All right. Uh, Mr. Nicholas, do you understand that in the document, the condition is listed as a violation of condition number 18, and the state is alleging that you violated condition number 18? Do you understand? Strong. All right. With regard to that allegation, then, how do you plead to violation of condition number 18? True or not true? True. All right, state. On the supplemental, dated March 27, 2023, um, violated condition number 15JA, on or about the second day of March 2023, in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Jonathan Ryan, Ryan Nichols, Nicholas, um, did then and there fail to comply with the instructions of the Bear County Community Supervision and Corrections Department sex offender program and that the defendant possessed an unauthorized, unmonitored Xperia smartphone with the required internet monitoring service provider, remote COM in violation of condition number 15 JA. And that is without the required instead of with the required? Yes, with the required internet monitoring service, yes, Your Honor. Yeah, without the required, that's how it reads. Failed to comply. Um, without the required. It should be with the required, Your Honor. I your motion to change without to with. Any objections? No, no, Judge. All right, Mr. Uh, Nicholas, do you understand the state's changing of 15 JA, changing the word without to with is a substantive change. Do you understand that? That's right. Do you understand your counsel has um, 10 days to prepare uh, to answer for 15 JA since the state has made a substantive change. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Knowing that, do you still wish to pre proceed with the violation of 15 JA? Yes, Your Honor. All right, with regards to 15 JA, how do you plead true or not true? True. 
True. All right, state. On or about the second day of March, 2023 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Jonathan Ryan, Nich Ryan Nicholas, the then and there failed to comply with instructions of the Bear County Community right. Division and Co Co Corrections Department Sex Offender Program and that the defendant possessed an unauthorized, unmonitored Dell Nova tablet without a required internet monitoring service provider remote COM in violation of condition number 15A, a disposed information. It should actually be with the without because it's supposed to have it on it. Yes. So okay. <laughs> if you want to start over reading with 15JA, the first one, please. Yes. Yes. The first on um, 15JA violated condition number 15JA on or about the second day of March 2023 in Bear County, Texas. The defendant, Jonathan Ryan, Ryan Nicholas, did then and there fail to comply with instructions of the Bear County Community Supervision and Corrections Department sex offender program and that the defendant possessed an unauthorized, unmonitored Xperia smartphone without the required internet monitoring service provider remote COM in violation of condition number 15 JA. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True. Say Violate condition number 15 JA on or about the second day of March 2023 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Jonathan Ryan Nicholas, did then and there fail to comply with the instructions of the Bear County Community Supervision and Corrections Department Sex Offender Program, and that the defendant possessed an unauthorized, unmonitored Dell notebook tablet without the required internet monitoring service provider remote COM in violation of condition number 15. How do you think is that true or not true? True. State? Um, yes, Your Honor. Um, um, the other allegations, do you waive those allegations? Yes, the state waives the the remaining allegations, Your Honor. Any objections? No objection. Mr. Nicholas, did you understand by pleading true to violations 15A, 15I, 15I, 15L, 16, 18, 15JA, and 15JA, uh, the court could find it true, grant the motion, and sentence you up to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes, Your Honor. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violations 15A, 15I, 15I, 15L, 16, 18, 15JA, and 15JA? Yes, Your Honor. The court will find 15A, 15I, 15I, 15L, 16, 18, 15JA, and 15JA true. Is there an agreement? Um, no, Your Honor. The defendant is pleading open to the court, so the state does have finished the witnesses. All right, State, call your first witness. The State call, call Sergeant Stephen O'Neill. From Judge, one, one second. Yes. Um, there was a, a misunderstanding on my part. I don't want to put it on the ADA. My belief when we talked last week is that we were going to do everything all together. We're going to do the motion to enter adjudication of guilt. And then there's some other cases out there. Um, I have an expert who's not available today. I mean, this is this is proceeding today. You all were set for a contested hearing today. So, counsel, if you want to get your expert witness here, you can call your expert witness, tell them to come down. But this is set for a contested hearing today. So it's proceeding today. It will be finished today. Okay. Well, we were the, there's never been a pre-sentence investigation report done on this case. Um, and so I think we're entitled to a pre-sentence investigation. No, we're here for a, today we're here for the court to make a ruling on whether or not he violated conditions of his probation. He's just pled true to them. Judge Angelini said this for a contested today. So both parties came in and said that you were entering a plea of true. So this case is going to be resolved today. Now, counsel, if you want to have your witness by Zoom, you're more than welcome to have them by Zoom, but this case is getting resolved today. It's set for contested hearing today. You all decided you didn't want to have a contested hearing, that he wanted to enter his pleas of true today. The court has accepted his pleas of true. The court has found the um, certain conditions true based upon his plea of true. So we are proceeding. You want to call so, your witness to see if they can do this via Zoom? She also needs to get money. I have to pay her $1,000. All right. This, I mean, this is what I can tell you all is this is happening in today. Okay. 
So, so do I need to fill out a motion for continuance? Oh, you can fill out a motion for continuance. The court will hear your motion. Okay. So I have a second to write one in. All right. Thank you. Motions for continuance. Yes. All right. Who's here on Pete Garcia? Okay, so what we just saw was the parole revocation hearing and his parole has been revoked. And now we're going to fast forward to, uh, what is it? May 13th and it's going to be his sentencing date. So let's go do, let's go take a, uh, A trip to the future, if you will. All right. Looks like we are ready to go. Okay. My way. Court is calling 2018-CR-3520-W, State of Texas versus Jonathan Nicholas. All right, could I have parties announced for the record? Denise Harrison for the State of Texas, Your Honor. Defense? Char for Jonathan Nicholas. All right, defendant in a pleas of true. The court found the pleas of true. True? All right. And defense, I think you filed a motion for continuance. Yes, Judge, I did file a motion for continuance. Um, I would like to withdraw that at this time. All right. Then uh, any objections to the withdrawal of the motion for continuance? None from the state, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Then the motion for continuance is withdrawn. Uh, state, do you have witnesses? Yes, Your Honor, three witnesses. We'd invoke the rule. All right, the rule is invoked. So uh, if you're going to testify, you'll need to wait outside. State, call your first witness. Thank you. State calls Sergeant Stephen O'Neill. Oh, I forgot. Do you want the little iPad? Yeah, there you are. They're doing paperwork. Yeah. You're a deputy. Oh, I was like, Oh, I was And to the clerk, do you know where that file is? Okay. All right. Thank you. Judge, one ha um, little house housekeeping. I do have a computer here with a disk um, for your, your privy and your, your view was regarding certain evidence. Where would you like for me to put it? Oh, uh, is it something that is um, sensitive? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, just whenever you're ready, submit it. And if they, they have no objection, you can just bring it forward and the court will okay. look at it. All right, could you raise your right hand for me, please? Oh, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. No, I do. All right, you can lower your hand. State your name for the record. Steve O'Neill. All right. State. N E A L. You may proceed. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Sergeant O'Neill, who do you currently work for? I'm assigned to the Child Exploitation Unit of the Office of the Attorney General for the state of Texas. Okay. And what are your duties um, with the um, Attorney General's office? I investigate crimes involving child exploitation and the exploitation of uh, minors. 
And how long have you um, how long have you been in law enforcement? I've been in law enforcement for approximately 24 years. And how long have you been doing child cases? Uh, I've been signed with the Attorney General's Office for the past three years. Three years. And um, in regarding the child cases, um, with your training experience, are you able to tell um, when, it, when it comes to child pornography um, if a child's pre prepubescent or postpubescent? Yes. With your training experience? Yes, ma'am. You heard earlier um, the defendant, Jonathan, um, Jonathan Nichols, um, plead, true to, plead true to having a cell phone and plead true to using the name Honey Badger. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And let's, let's start with the name um, Honey Badger. Did you receive tips, um, some other tips regarding the name Honey Badger? Yes, ma'am. Um, can you please explain? Can you please um, explain to the court how did how do you receive cyber tips? A service provider in this particular incident, uh, Google, had reported uh, five cyber tip reports to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Those reports were found to be under the purview of the Office of the Attorney General of Texas, and they were sent to us, which were then funneled down to myself to investigate those cases. And how do you start the investigation? Uh, upon reviewing the report, I will then I will then uh, ascertain if there's any type of identifying information inside said report, uh, which in this case there was internet protocol or IP addresses that I was able to send subpoena on for subscriber information. And with the um, cyber tip, does um, on the cyber tip does it give you um, names um, like? Um, screen name or um, in this case, a Google name? Yes, there was a username, I believe, and then email addresses. Okay. And what was the username? A uh, honey badger. Okay. And after you, um, and after you sent out the subscriber information, um, what did you do next, next in your investigation? After I received results from AT&T in reference to the subscriber information, it returned to an address uh, in San Antonio, the address was 13506 Owl Tree. Uh, I researched whom would live at that address. And who lived at that address? Um, my uh, crime analyst, uh, Landra Polanski, had returned information to me that identified uh, Baltazar Luby, a Martha Nicholas, and a Jonathan Nicholas residing at that address. And with your investigation, did you um, um, investigate these three individuals? Yes, ma'am. And through, the, through your investigation, this, um, what did you find? Uh, through information I obtained through a search warrant submitted to Google, uh, upon viewing photographs and videos in the Google account, I was also able to identify Jonathan Nicholas as the owner of that account based on his driver's license photograph provided to me by my crime analyst and based on the images and pictures I found in the Google account belonging to Honey Badger. And just a brief description, what kind of images did you find in, um, in this Google account? There were some self-made videos of Mr. Nicholas. Uh, there were images of his driver's license uh, in there. Uh, I believe there was images of his medications. Um, any other um, information? Uh, there were additional images of child pornography located in that account as well. Do you remember how many images? Uh, I don't recall the exact amount of images that was in the Google account. Um, I know uh, we described one in my narrative uh, for, for reporting purposes. And after you um, received the information for the Google account, what did you do next in your investigation? Uh, we conducted surveillance uh, at the residence and identified vehicles parked there that belonged to Martha Nicholas and Luby Baltazar. And after you did surveillance of the um, residents, did you receive? Uh, did you um, obtain a search warrant and a, um, an arrest warrant? Yes, ma'am. At that time, we realized that uh, we were learned that Mr. Nicholas is a registered sex objector. Honor, this witness can testify to his own personal knowledge and not say we, we, we. And speak All right. To what he personally What's your had. legal objection, counsel? Your Honor, he can testify to his personal knowledge because he was there. My question is, yeah. what is your legal objection? Legal objection I'm is sorry, is your microphone turned? There's the microphone. Right there. Is it green? It's green. Uh, sorry. Okay. Will, you pull it over objection? Objection? Well, will you pull it over to you? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs>
My legal objection is that a witness- Is it hearsay? Is that your objection? Sustain. Confront the witness. All right, ask your next question. With your personal lot and uh, knowledge, um, did you did you um, obtain this um, a search warrant and um, an arrest warrant? After I conducted my surveillance and the information I obtained during my investigation, I contacted uh, Oscar Salinas, who's an assistant district attorney with Bear County, and reviewed the information with him in reference to Mr. Nicholas being a registered sex offender and the information contained in the cyber tip reports of the child pornography that he had uploaded. Uh, to his Google account, and it was agreed that arrest warrants would be obtained for Mr. Nicholas and also a search warrant for his residence. And um, do you remember what day you um, um, you went and searched the um, house? I believe, if memory serves, it was December 6th. Okay. And um, can you please tell the court um, what happened on that day? Once the uh, team arrived at the residence, I observed an uh, individual I recognized to be Martha Nicholas at the back door of the residence. I identified myself to her, informed her that we had a search warrant to search the residence. I asked her if Jonathan was at home. She told me that he was at home and he was inside. Prior to the team making entry into the residence, there was a dog that seemed somewhat vicious. We allowed Mrs. Nichols to obtain control of that dog and ask Jonathan to step outside, which he complied. How long did it take for Jonathan to come outside when he, um, after you had contact with the mother? There was approximately about a three to four minute uh, window of her going back in the house and then him coming outside. And after um, he did, um, after he came outside, did you have contact with him? I did. Um, did you read him his, um, his rights? I informed him of our reason for being at the residence. I asked him if he would like to speak with me. He indicated that he would. I escorted him to my vehicle where I have set up to do a recorded interview. And once we got into the vehicle, I advised him of his Miranda rights, to which he stated that he understood and waived them to continue speaking with me. And during, um, during that um, conversation, did you ask him if he, if he had a phone? I did. Initially on the porch, I asked him if he had a cell phone. He told me he didn't. And then I reiterated to him in the vehicle again to explain to me he didn't have a cell phone. Okay. Um, nothing, um, um, there was nothing substantive, um, substantive um, from his um, interview with you, was there? Nothing other than denial. After the, um, after the interview with the, with the defendant, um, what did you do next? After I interviewed uh, Mr. Nicholas, I went back and asked Mrs. Nicholas if he had a phone. She instructed that she does not aware that he has a phone. I went inside and met with my team that was conducting the search. Uh, they informed me that uh, through searching through his stuff, Jay had here say sustained. During during the initial during um, the initial search, um, are you aware if there was a phone found? I was aware that we found a phone. I mean during um. And how did you go about finding the phone? I recalled during a conversation um, that was found in Mr. Nicholas's Google account that he had texted a phone number to an individual. Uh, that number also matched a phone number that he had listed for himself on his Texas driver's license application. I entered the residence. I instructed everyone inside the residence to hold the noise down. I called the phone number and I heard a phone buzzing. And when you heard the phone buzzing, were you able to locate it? I was able to locate the phone. Um, and can you please explain to the judge where the phone was? The phone was located in a, a small desk drawer just inside the master bedroom. Um, and after you found the phone, did you call it again to verify? I did. I called the number again and noted that my phone number was showing up on the screen of that phone as the one calling in. Um, and um, did you... Um, Retrieve, um, retrieve that phone for evidence? I did. And what did, you, um, what did you end up doing with that phone? That phone was able to be unlocked on scene. At that time, we could usually, the investigators would conduct an on-site preview. Um, and, whatever, go ahead. Okay, and did you, are you the one who conducted the on-site on preview? I was not. Okay, and who conducted the on-site preview? Sergeant Hillary Lyon. So what else did you conduct? L-Y-O-N. Yes, ma'am. And then um, after they, um, I bet you where they did an online preview of the phone, what did you do next with the phone? Uh, the phone was then uh, logged into evidence. 
uh, on an inventory sheet. And then I secured all evidence and transported that evidence back to the Georgetown Police Department to be secured in temporary evidence lockers there. Okay. Are you aware if, the, if there was a phone, to, um, a forensic um, download of the phone? Yes. And you can, and who conducted that? Sergeant Barry Greer with the Attorney General's Office. And um, on scene, what did you do, um, do next after um, you found the phone on scene? After the phone was located and turned over for processing, um, I explained to Mr. Nichols that there were, there were warrants issued for his arrest and he would be taken into custody and I transported him to the Bear County Jail. May I press the witness, Your Honor? Yes. I'm handing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 1. You already marked it? Yes, I have. Um, can you please um, explain to me what's on um, what, what, what we are looking at? This is a disk that contains the cyber tips that were involved in this case. Okay. And did you have a chance to look at it? I have. And are um, those to be true and accurate to the cyber tips that you received? Yes, ma'am. Has it been altered in any way? Uh, no, ma'am. And did you um, put your bad, badge number and date it um, to verify that you looked at this disk? Yes, ma'am. May I take this witness on a brief word, Diary, Your Honor? Yes. Um, Sergeant, um, good afternoon. All right, so did you personally create state's exhibit number one? No, I did not, sir. Okay. Um, who did, if you know? I do not know. Okay. Uh, have you ever seen what's on it? On that particular exhibit? Yes, sir. I viewed it. Okay. When? This morning. Okay. And so you're relying on another person that works in your office that that made that disc and you're you're basically vouching for it that that contains cyber tips is that correct no sir i'm not aware of who made that disc okay i know that disc contains the cyber tips included in the case okay how do you know that because i viewed them this morning okay um and what is a cyber tip a cyber tip is a report uh, made by an internet service provider, as in this case it was Google, to the National Center for Missing Exploited Children when questionable files of uh, child exploitation or child sexual abuse material is found in their servers. Um, they report that to the National Center for Missing Exploited Children, at which time, once that report comes in, NCMEC is the acronym, they create a report. Uh, and then based on the IP address, they they find out the location and in, in the nation where this is occurring and they send that to the to the uh, agency in charge of investigating that all right thank you no further questions on board dyer all right stage um, um just want one um couple questions your honor um this this that um that i made the, um that i made and provided you this morning is it is a true and accurate um copy of what you provided me um, um regarding the evidence on this case correct Yes, that is the cyber tips. Okay. No further questions, John. At this time, the state would like to admit state's exhibit one evidence. Any objection? Uh, it's a prejudicial judge under Rule 403 of the text rules. All right, that objection will be overruled. The court is joining a uh, balancing test, and the court is going to find that it's more prohibitive than prejudicial. Uh, state's exhibit number one is admitted. Your Honor, may I please, may I please approach the court with the computer? Yes. I'm not sure if defense wants to be up there too. Mm -hmm. All right, if you'll approach. Okay, thank you, Judge. And defense, have you had a chance to view uh, state's exhibit number one? Well, I had a, an expert do that, Judge. Okay, all right, if you'll bring the computer forward 
And the state, the state would like to also um, state that defense did come to my office and did review um, all the um, evidence that we had that I was unable to physically hand it to them. Okay. Yeah, to the court, state's exhibit from a website end up being under seal. Yes, Due to the confidential nature. And I'm assuming it's child pornography. Mm -hmm. And so that is the reason why it will be under seal. Okay. Yes, I did do those. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I'm only going to show the court a couple of them for me. So which one? I'm sorry. It's I'll just let the court know. I'm going into cyber tip eight eight one zero three six 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 on the disc. Number eight, not eight, Denosa. Yeah, eight. Thank you, guys. And the first one I will be showing the court is the last part of it because it is long. It is 12, um, 2018 dash 12 dash 11, 14.01.56 MP4. Yes, um, and the court is viewing state's exhibit number one. All right, thank you very much. Number two is the last of its letty, L E T Y dot W M V dot M P four. Four. Right, MP4. Can you um, can you just say um, can you give me a, give, give a court a, a brief description of the ending of it? Uh, yes, ma'am. During the during the video, it is apparent that the adult male is penetrating the genitals of the female child and. At the end of the video, it's a little over three minutes long. You can hear her crying and sobbing about the uh, encounter. Next one is E. Um, last last part of it's eight five E one nine NP four. And the last one I'm going to show the court um, is going to be 24607-361 MP4. Can you tell the court? I'm sorry, many, give me one second again. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm switching my okay. so I can do this. Sorry, go ahead. Are you ready? Yes, okay. Can you please tell the court how many videos was on this first cyber tip? I believe it was about 15 videos. 
Any pictures? Uh, two, two images. Okay. And the ones I show the court, you use you use those ones specifically for your warrant. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Regarding your um, investigation, is there anything else you did in, in regards to your investigation? Once everything was um, submitted, and it was just on the uh, five warrants of arrest that we obtained for Mr. Nicholas, and uh, then upon completion of forensics, I reviewed the forensics uh, report from Sergeant Greer. Um, and upon, upon your review of Sergeant Greer's report, he's here to testify, but um, you did um, provide um, evidence to myself of um, more child pornography? Yes, I did. Um, and in your training experience, the videos that we uh, that I did show the court and that's on this um, cyber tips, with your training experience, um, does it meet the statute of child pornography? Yes, ma'am. No further questions from this witness, Your Honor. Defense. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Sergeant, uh, do you know what a deep fake is? Let's say that one more time. A deep fake no, video sir. is? No, sir. Okay. Um, what is your experience uh, in training in determining whether something is actually a true picture of a of a child versus something that a video that someone creates that looks like a child, behaves like a child, but really is not a child, a deep fake. Those are usually patently obvious uh, when you view them. Okay, so you are aware of what a deep fake is. I had never heard it called that. Okay, what would be a better word that maybe I can learn? I've heard uh, uh, we've had cases where it's uh, CGI. Okay. Um, and, and those those are obviously uh, created uh, by individuals who have experience in uh, making those types of videos. Okay. And then you have your legitimate video files. Okay. Um, isn't it true there's a database, law enforcement database, where you can take suspected child pornography and try to and try to look through the database and actually identify the person that is depicted in in the picture or the video there are there are databases uh there's cvip uh which is crime victims identification um once we completed the investigation we and forensics is completed on that investigation we send our forensics examiners complete a disc called a cvip disc we send that off to the national center for missing and exploiting children um those can be identified if in fact the child in the video has been identified uh that's not always the case meaning the child hasn't been identified before but it doesn't negate the fact that at the time the video was created that the that the child that it was a child Okay, so uh, for the for the cyber tips that that we're talking about, were, were you or anyone in your in your unit or in the attorney general's office or someone who worked with you at the attorney general's office, um, did that uh, type of analysis? Did y'all do that type of analysis? Did you go to the database and, and try to figure out who is this person? Is it a real person? And oh yeah, it is, because we have them in this database. Uh, that report was sent upon completions of forensics. Yes, we sent a, a report to uh, the National Center for Missing Exploited Children. And if memory serves, I wanna say they've identified like two or three uh, groups where, where the actual child victim has been identified in the video, um, but again, that doesn't, that's not a be all that ends all that, that determines if that is a video of child pornography or not. Okay. Um, all right, well, what about this uh, technology that's really rearing its head 
artificial intelligence, chat GPT. Never um, heard of it. You've never heard of it? No. Artificial intelligence? I've heard of artificial intelligence, but you used an acronym after that that I had, I'm not familiar with. Okay. Chat GPT is an artificial intelligence program where you can tell a program what to do and it will actually do it. Are, are you familiar with that? I'm not familiar with it. I'm sure it exists. And what, what is your educational background? As far as, as, far as um, what, uh, you know, that forms the basis of, of your knowledge in the area that you're talking about. Of identifying children? Yes. Uh, well, I am a father. I have raised children. I've raised a little girl. Um, I have 24 years of law enforcement experience. I was a computer forensics examiner uh, back in the early 2000s, investigating child pornography cases at a former agency I used to work for. Um, and I have worked these types of cases for the last uh, almost, well, almost three years now. Okay. And, and so how do you test to see if the images you're looking at are either deep fakes or um, created by artificial intelligence. How do you do that? I can view them and tell that they're not, they don't appear to be fake at all. Okay, what's the, is there a scientific way to determine if this is a, a picture of a real human being or not? I, I'm not aware of one, but again, I have experience in viewing the videos and can tell that it's a real video with a real child victim. Okay. Um, I, I guess what I'm what I'm really asking is, do you have do you have a background in computer science and things that are going on in the computer world? Nothing current, no, sir. Okay. Other than just knowledge and experience of the different applications and things like that, but a, but a technical background into the computer side of things, no, I don't. I don't claim to be anything up to date as far as the technical aspects of programs and software that do different things like that. Okay. No further questions. This was a couple of things. You've seen CGI, correct? Yes. And you've seen um, real child pornography, correct? Yes. How many images of, the, of it do you think you have seen? Thousands. Thousands. And with your training experience, was this CGI? No. No further questions, Your Honor. No further questions. All right. So, this witness excuse the subject to recall. Um, this. Um, the state um, has no further questions for a minute. Um, we would like to ask for him to be excused. No objection. Yeah. Can I ask him a few spelling questions just real quick? Yes. Um, hey. His street name? It's, it's Al O W L Tree. T R O O W L. Like oh, yes, ma'am. Tree. T R E E. And then the person talking about something? Baltazar Luby. B A L T A Z A R. L U B Y. Yes, ma'am. The rule has been invoked. That means that you can't discuss your testimony with anyone. The only person you're allowed to speak to are attorneys for the state or the defense. Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you. State call your next witness. The state call Sergeant Hillary Lyon. That's L Y O N. Do raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but truth? So help you God. Right, you can have a seat. Make sure you keep your voice up. State your name for the record. Hillary Lyon. All right, state. Thank you. Sergeant Hillary Lane, who do you currently work for? Texas Attorney General's Office. 
Okay, and what unit do you work for? The child exploitation unit. How long have you been working for um, the child exploitation unit? A uh, year and a half. And before that, where did you work? Um, the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement, and prior to that, uh, Tyler Police Department. And how long have you been in, um, in law enforcement? Since 2007. And you were in court earlier um, when um, the defendant um, pled true to his um, MTR, is that correct? That's correct. And you heard him um, plead true to having us um, unauthorized cell phones, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, did you, um, were you present on December 6th um, for the search warrant? Yes, ma'am. Okay, of 2020, um, 2022. Um, did you write a supplement? No, ma'am. Okay. Why didn't you write a supplement? Um, normally, I, depending on our job on the search warrant, um, we usually don't are required to do so, depending on our job there. Um, on this particular uh, case, Steve's case, or, or Sergeant O'Neill's case, um, I was assigned search um, initially. And then when we discovered uh, the cell phone, um, it would not hook up to Celebrite, which is our uh, machine that we use to essentially dump the phones, so, um, preview the phones. So your unit actually brings the Celebrite um, unit out, um, computer out to the scene? Yes, yes, okay. our unit you normally does that, yes. Okay, and you try, uh, when, it, when the phone was found, um, you try to hook it up to the Celebrite? I didn't, but yes, one, one of the uh, members of our team did, yes. And, was, and you said it, it was not um, able to be able to, was not able to be downloaded on scene? Correct. Okay, so when it was not able to be downloaded, what did you do? Uh, we had to do a manual preview of the phone. And can you please explain to the court what a manual preview is? Um, basically, holding the phone, we record it on another device, usually our state phones, um, and manually open up the gallery uh, photos on the um, cell phone in question, and go through the videos and photos in the gallery. And why do you do that? Uh, just to see what is on the, the device itself. Okay. And did you do that um, um, this day? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And when you, <laughs> when you did, when, and when you conducted the live um, preview of the phone, um, what did you um, preview yourself? Um, several videos and images that were on the device in the gallery. What kind of images? Uh, um, um, on the device? Uh, nude images and videos of adult and child females. Okay. So he had adult and child females on his phone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and you stated um, you um, you recorded it, correct? Yes. Um, um, may I approach the witness, Your Honor? Yes. Thank you. I'm about to hand you what's been marked as states exhibit two. Do you recognize this? Yes. And what is this? This is the um, copy of a live preview that I conducted on that date. Okay. And did you have a chance to look at it? I did. Okay, and, it, and this is an accurate copy of the um, live preview that you conducted on that day? It is. Has it been altered in any way? No, ma'am. And, oh, let me get back over here. And you know, this is the disc that you looked at because did you initial it and put your badge number on it? Yes, ma'am, I did. Okay. And then you also view, you, view, you viewed it this morning, correct? I did. Um, at this time, you're on a, the state would like to admit state's exhibit two. Any objection? Um. Can we approach, well, I don't know that we need to approach, Judge. Um, our agreement was that the state would not per pursue the allegations of new number ones. In fact, they dropped them in the motion to enter adjudication of guilt. And now they're spending all their time going on the, the allegations I, that I they dropped. What, I don't know what your agreement was with the state. Your, your agreement, what, um, 
We I mean, and, and, and here's the thing. My understanding is that an agreement that's reached, unless it's going to be placed before the court, it's supposed to be confidential, whatever your negotiations are. But if there was a specific plea bargain agreement amongst you that said the state would not be pre presenting evidence with regards to um, the viewing of child pornography, then the court will hear that. Well, and your honor, that that was not the case, your honor. Um, and what we are um, presenting the courts is what, what what was on his um, unmonitored smartphone that he had in his possession, and the fact that he um, in um, individual items that goes to the honey badger name that um, that also had child pornography with the cyber cybertips. Counsel, you did plead true to the uh, moniker of honey badger in the uh, that, motion to revoke. That's true. That's true. And so I don't know why we're screwing it up. I mean, it's the state's, um, the state has filed a motion to revoke. The court is here to hear whatever anyone wants to hear. I will let party both parties know that I know that um, Mr. Nichols has pled true to these allegations. Okay, thank you. So I'm aware of that. All right, let's take a short recess. Can you need us? Yeah, I'm re remember, we're going to go over the details of this after the uh, hearing, but we'll skip this recess for now. Here we go. All right. Uh, State, any more questions? Um, it, it was just um, the minutes of State Exhibit 2, Your Honor. All right. Any objections to State's Exhibit Number 2, the thanks. Objection irrelevant. We've already pled true to that allegation that was cited previously. All right. Defense objection will be overruled. State Exhibit Number 2 is admitted. Thank and you. Uh, it will be admitted under seal. Your Honor? Yes. Would you like to come to her as well? Part? They're going to have his mother come up soon. Honey Badger. What a name, huh? Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the, uh, it helps the channel grow and check out the, my main channel in the description below. Um, I have over 500 uh, parole, revocation style parole hearings. All right, any further questions of this witness? Today? I have no further questions of this witness, Your Honor. Defense, any questions? No, Judge. All right, thank you. The rule has been invoked, that means you can't discuss your testimony with anyone. The only person you're allowed to speak to our attorneys for the state of defense. All right, uh, state any other witnesses? The state has no further uh, witnesses at this time. Defense, any witnesses? Yes, Judge, we've called Martha Nicholas. I'll go again. Thank you. If you remember. Uh, can she be um, uh, released, Your Honor? Any objection? No objection? Yes. All right, defense, if you have your witness come forward. Okay. okay. Yes, ma'am. And those should be uh, under seal. Yes, oh, under seal. All right, thank you. If you remember on the uh, initial parole revocation hearing, they wanted to have expert Could witnesses. Could you take a seat here, please? And it looks like their expert witness is uh, his mother. There's a little bit of sarcasm there. Can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear in front of the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help us out. All right, you can lower your hand. State your name for the record, please. Martha Nicholas. All right, defense. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ma'am, could you please introduce yourself to the judge and spell your full name? 
Judge. Uh, my name is Martha Nicholas, M-A-R-T-H-A-N-I-C-H-O-L-A-S. I'm Jonathan's mother. Okay. And uh, how old is Jonathan? 37. How old? 37. Okay. Pull that microphone a little bit closer to you. All right. All right. Uh, do you have any other children between, besides Jonathan? I do not. He's my only son. Okay. Um, did he go to school? Yes, he did. How far did you go in school? Uh, he has college. Uh, he has an associate's in uh, surgical tech. Pull the microphone a little bit. Okay. He does have college, yes. All right. Okay. Um, does Jonathan have any serious health problems? He does. Uh, just recently, this past year, um, he has he got COVID, and uh, he was sick for a couple of weeks, and then uh, it developed into pneumonia, uh, to where we had to take him to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Jonathan does have severe sleep apnea, and so we were concerned about that. And while he was in the hospital, it was determined that he had a heart failure. Okay. He also does have um, hypertension, high blood pressure, and he is diabetic. Okay. What type of diabetes? Type one or type two? Uh, the the thing is, is that he's not not in, on insulin or anything like that. It was in uh, when when I took him to his primary care uh, doctor that uh, she noticed that his his blood sugar was high. So I I have a letter where she states what she treated him for. Okay. Now um, after. After your son was arrested and placed in the jail, um, there were very high bonds set. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. About five hundred thousand dollars in bonds, something like that. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, and with his health conditions, um, were you and were tell the judge about your. Uh, contact with the jail in trying to get him medication or other uh, medical devices and what it, whether or not it was a struggle. Okay. Uh, yes, it was a struggle. Um, I tried to get him his CPAP, which he needs. What is um, a CPAP? A CPAP is a breathing device okay. uh, that uh, he uses while he sleeps. Um, it, it took maybe five to seven, five, six days, I believe, uh, to get that to him. Um, when I was in contact with the nurses at the jail, um, we talked about the medications that he was on. And- um, What medications was he on? Um, I also have a list of, of that, but he did, he was taking um, Entresto for his heart, which was my concern. Why? Um, because it we weren't they weren't able to get him that, and he specifically has to have that medication. They gave him another medication. Who's they? Uh, the the nurses there, the the physician assistant, the PA at the jail. Okay. Entresto. They gave him Farsiga or something that's with has to do with kidney failure and another medication um, to take its place. And I realized that when he did come out on bond 30 days later, he was not, he was not feeling well. I had to take him to the cardiologist. So the medication he had for those 30 days was not enough. Not enough to what? To sustain him. I mean, I, it, it it has to do with his weight and other issues. Okay. So um, he was feeling tired. Um, he was having trouble breathing. 
Um, he would walk short distances and, and have trouble breathing. Okay. Um, all right, so did you see an, a decline in his health while he was in jail? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, I did uh, talk to one of the one of the nurses there, and I told her specifically we had just gotten the prescription for that medication for the intestinal interest intresto, and it's and what a, is that for? It's for for heart failure. Okay, and it's a very expensive medication. I hadn't opened the prescription. I could have had the prescription sent over directly, and she said, "No, ma'am." She goes, "We don't do that." She said, "This is the county. You'll get what you get." All right. So what medication, if you remember, did they end up giving her? Did end up giving Farsica, the jail to give to Jonathan? Farsica was one of them. Okay. I don't, I, I wrote them down. I do have them at home and I wrote down the nurse that gave it to him. Okay. Their name. All right. Was he also, before he went to jail, um, did he have regular uh, doctor visits with his cardiologist? Uh, the, cardi the, the heart failure, we didn't discover until he went to the hospital for COVID and pneumonia. Uh, it okay. ended up not being that. It ended up being fluid in his heart that was causing him to, um, to drown in, the, in that. That's, that's what was causing the gurgling sound in his lungs. Okay. Um, was he uh, was he also being prescribed uh, medication for his cholesterol? Yes. Okay. Does he have high cholesterol? Yes. What about? Um, let's go back to his heart for a second. Um, did he have a catheter for his heart? They would not put the catheter in until. Um, he lost a little bit of weight because okay, who's he could that? code the doctor, the cardiologist, Okay, because he can code. Not the one at the jail, but... At the hospital. Okay. All right. So he d does he need, according to the doctor advice, does he need a catheter for his heart? Yes, he does. Okay. And what's going to happen if that, if he doesn't get that? He'll have heart failure. And die. Right. Um, was he also supposed to be taking uh, water pills to help him get yes. rid of the excess fluids in yes. his body? Yes. All right. And so when I hear the phrase heart failure, I'm thinking. Like if something doesn't get done, he's going to die or, or someone's going to die or get very, very ill, um, you know, shorter than later. Is that, do you know if that's accurate? It is accurate. Um, he's, his heart is operating anywhere between 35 and 45%. And even when he got out of jail, did that percentage go up or go down or is it staying the same the 35 45 percent i wasn't told by the doctor exactly um we and we didn't know how much time he had so um i took him just to get him checked out and get a letter from him saying that he was treated uh at the hospital and in his in his office okay So did he get COVID in 2022 or 2021? I believe it was 21. Okay. And how serious did that um, virus affect him? Uh, he may have been really sick about two months. Um, but like I said, he does have a breathing apparatus at night. And so we thought it was that. You thought it was what? It was his sleep apnea. Okay. And it was not. It, he had full-blown pneumonia and 
um, and he had fluid from his heart that was making him drown at night when he had that breathing apparatus on. Okay. Now you understand that your son is charged with some very serious charges. I do. Correct? Correct. What would you like to tell the judge as far as <clears throat> what she should do in this case? I mean, he's admitted to violating certain conditions to certain conditions of his community supervision, his probation, deferred adjudication. Um, and now he has some new cases. What would you like to tell the judge to please do? I would like to tell her that- Well, tell her. That no mother wants their son to die in prison. And if there's anything that I can do to help him, he needs help. I want, I want the opportunity to do that for him. I love my son. He's my only son. I need him to help me, you know, to support our home. It's just me and him. And um, I'm asking the court for mercy and to be lenient. Thank you. No further questions. They may have some questions. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> you heard your son earlier um, admit to having an unauthorized cell phone, correct? Did I hear him earlier? Yeah, he pledged to to having an unauthorized oh, cell yes, phone. Oh, yes, yes, okay. correct. How did that cell phone get in your room, in your drawer? I believe he put it there. And how long did he have that cell phone for? Cell phone was not his. The cell phone is an extra phone we had in the house. The phone uh, probation, uh, the phone number they have on record is my cell phone. Only where I worked, I was not allowed to take that cell phone in. So when probation would call, um, they would leave a couple of messages on my, on my um, voicemail where they needed to talk to Jonathan. So I'm talking about the cell phone that they retrieved mm -hmm. from your... Um, during a search warrant from your room, um, you're saying um, he must have put it there, but it but it wasn't his. Right. We didn't buy it for him. We didn't. I didn't buy it for him. But he had access to it, correct? Yes, ma'am. It was in my house. Yes. Um, <clears throat> earlier, um, a minute ago, um, defense um, talked about his high bonds. Remember, he had high bonds. And do you remember um, me asking you some questions during the bond hearing? Yes. Um, and do you remember at, um, me asking some questions in regards to um, him not having access to any kind of phones in the house? No, ma'am. So you don't recall? So you don't recall you said you stating that he wasn't going to be able to have any access to any additional? Oh, phones? that I made that comment. Yes. yes. Okay, that's correct. But then after he was released on bond, when probation came to the house on March 2nd, 2023, he was, and he pled true to it today. Um, he had um, some more devices that he wasn't supposed to have, isn't that correct? He has a flip phone that, that he has registered uh, with probation. But do you remember on the day when, they, when probation came, they took two more devices? Those devices were looked at uh, when when they came the first time and they left them behind. When when they came to search my house, they they looked at those devices and they left them behind. But probation um, on the day um, in March of this year, they took those devices, correct? They did. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Because and you heard them plead true that he was around them when he wasn't supposed to be around. Um, Devices there were again. devices that were, one was a broken phone. The other one was a, a notebook that 
it, it's so old. I don't even think it turned on anymore. And you you stated um, you wanted the court to have mercy and give him a second chance. Yes. Um, no mother would want their child to die in prison. Yes. But would you agree that no mother will want their child to be victimized over and over and over again by um, by individuals? I agree. And would you agree that videos of child pornography, victims are being, these girl, little girls, little boys are being victimized every time someone watches it? I do not agree. I don't think they're being victimized. I do not. If it's a video. So you think it's okay for him? They to were watch. victimized the first time it was done, and whoever did that, I do not agree that that's correct. That's the, that's a good thing. No. So you think it's okay for your son to um to look at no. child pornography? No, it's not. No further questions from this witness, are you? Just a brief redirect, Judge, if I may. Yes. Okay. Now, um, your son, Jonathan, was on deferred adjudication for the online solicitation uh, of a minor, right? Right. Okay. Um, but he was, was he actually talking to a minor or to an undercover police officer? An undercover police officer. Okay. <clears throat> uh, does Jonathan have a driver's license? He does. He does, can he drive? He can. Right. Does he have a car? He does not. Okay. So what vehicle does he drive? If I have two vehicles under my name and he doesn't drive either one. He, like I said before, he has severe uh, sleep apnea. So he, he dozes off and then he has a heart condition. So I would not let him drive my vehicles. Okay. He doesn't have access to the keys to my vehicles. He's not on my insurance. He's also taking now medication for his heart. Oh, let me ask you this. Um, is there any internet available in your home? No. Okay, why not? It was ordered by the court. Okay. And has that order been followed? Yes, it has. Okay. All right. So during the answering the questions from the prosecutrix, um, that when the search warrant was executed on your home, they left two phones behind, correct? The one was broken and the other one was just inoperable. Is that Not correct? Not two phones, one phone and one, one no notebook. Okay, I'm yeah, sorry. A little one tablet. phone, yes. Sorry to talk over you. <laughs> one phone and, and a notebook. one notebook, correct? Correct. And so at the do you know how old those devices are approximately? They're more than 10 years. Okay. Um, why do you keep them around? They don't like- I, I didn't know how to dispose of them. So I just kept them. I mean, they were in a drawer, they were put away. Okay. Wh whose drawer were they put in away? In my desk drawer in my, in my bedroom. Okay. Is, is Jonathan able to work? He's able to work. I, uh, it would have to be something inside, something that was not labor intensive. Okay. Now, as part of his, uh, him being on deferred adjudication probation, was he required to go to something called the STOP program? Yes, STOP, stop. Okay. Um, and that is a, is that a program where they do what they can to help uh, people who are uh, found guilty of sex, uh, sex related crimes? That is correct. Okay. Um, and I don't know if you remember all the meetings, but how many times a week would he have to go uh, 
and per, uh, participate in the treatment? Once a week. Okay. Um, would you take him there? Every time. All right. Okay. After he was, after he was getting help, did you see any changes in him? Good changes, yes. Um, I was under the understanding everything was good. He always had positive conversation after his after his counseling. Um, and if the court were to continue him on deferred, continue him on probation, um, would you go? Would you do anything and everything, including an extra mile or do over and above what was required to, to make sure that your son complies with all the conditions that are set by the judge? Absolutely. I don't know what's gonna happen at the end of this hearing. Oh yeah, and as a condition of bond, uh, was he ordered to wear a uh, leg, an electronic monitor device, a GPS device? Yes. Okay. Were there ever any violations of that device? None whatsoever. And and where you live, um, John. I mean, Jonathan lives with you, correct? Yes. So does he go outside and play with kids or anything like that? No. Okay. Does he have visitors that come over to the house that are children? No. How bad would it break your heart? Today was the last day you got to hold your son. It would break me, sir. Nothing further. Nothing to say, Your Honor. All right, thanks for coming in to testify. Okay. All right, any other witnesses? Defense? No, Judge. Defense, say, any other witnesses? Nothing to say, Your Honor. Just tell me. All right, the court has heard the plea of truth. The court is going to find the defendant guilty. Does anybody want to speak towards punishment? State, what are you requesting? Um, Your Honor, at this particular time, he stays asking for 20 years due to the fact that he was, oh, sorry, it's a habit. <laughs> you saw my stare. Did you? Yes, I did. I felt it. Um, due to the fact that the defendant was already on probation for a child a child, um, child case, he's already already a registered sex offender. He was in um, sex um sex offender program with probation. Um, and obviously none of this is working, Your Honor. And now we're here for more serious um, offenses um, regarding child pornography that he was in possession of, Your Honor. Um, so state, you're asking for 20? Yes, Your Honor. Defense, what are you requesting? <clears throat> Thank you, Judge. Um, you know, I've come to know Jonathan and his mom. And these are the type of cases that really hit me um, because I know the system is geared um, no. against him. I'm not mm -hmm. saying you are, Judge. Um, but I know that anytime you talk about children, it just gets everybody's back bowed and, and they just want to throw them away and throw people away. and you know, lock them up and throw away the key. Um, I don't know how long he's going to, if he gets revoked, I don't know how long he's going to stay alive in the prison system. And so what I would ask is that you continue him on deferred. No, he's not going to be continued. I've already found him guilty. So the only question is how much time he's going to receive. Okay. Well, we'd ask for no more than five years. All right, anything you wish to say, Mr. Nicholas? No, mm -hmm. All right, uh, as previously stated, the court is finding you guilty. The court will sentence you to 20 years in the prison, give you credit for any time served, and there's chapter 62 registration. 
Shawnee Woods entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? No. All right. Uh, you do have a limited right to appeal. That right to appeal is as it relates to the allegations in the motion, not the fact that you were on deferred adjudication. Uh, good luck to you, Mr. Nicholas. All right, the party is on AJ Delgado. I think they're going to. Okay. Oh, good luck. And there you have it. This is the first time I've seen this judge and I like her. She was no nonsense. I would have liked to have heard her, her make some kind of statement, but maybe it's just not her style. We're gonna unpack this from, uh, from beginning to end. So I did, I did uh, use chat GPT speaking of the devil and they say that in texas for these type of crimes they typically are required to serve 50 percent of their sentence before being eligible for parole so that would be 10 years before he can then have parole you know it was uh remember he he was caught in 2018 in a sting talking to who was police, but who he thought was an underage child. They had arrested him. He was then given basically a suspended sentence. They were like, you don't have to do prison time, but you're on probation, you're on parole. If you violate it, you do X, Y, and Z, you're gonna get locked back up. Not only did he violated it, but he violated it with new felonies and he was caught. This is what's interesting he uploaded those images and videos to his Google Drive. Now, he might have not done it intentionally. Sometimes if you have a setting on a phone to automatically upload files to your Google Drive, maybe when your memory is becoming full or something, it would do that. So either he was just naive to technology, didn't think he'd get caught, or it did it without his knowledge. And I had no idea, but Google is screening, apparently, images and then reporting it, which is amazing. I had no idea. Now, whether you want to talk about privacy and whatnot, that's a whole different story. But, hey, I'm willing to give up my privacy um, if it means we're going to catch these, these monsters, these cockroaches, what we call them. 37 year old baby he's done nothing with his life he literally leeches off of his mother who sits there and is really an enabler we we let's be real she's an enabler she's enabled him to just sit in his house her house do nothing doesn't have a job and prey on children. The device ended up in her room. You know, I don't even believe that he put it there. I believe she put it there when they were coming. She tried to hide it. She says in, in her speech, I want, you know, I'm alone. It's just me and, me and him in the house. I need him. To take. She starts going on how maybe he's going to help support the home with what? She couldn't even, like... He doesn't have a job to support the home. And then she goes on to say that he has no access to her cars. So why do you have two cars? You claim it's just you and him. You have two cars, really? You're, you're, you're doing that great? What, you got your, your convertible and then you got your snow cruiser? I mean, I call BS. And then... She actually has, she actually says, I don't believe that they're being victimized about the children. And then she like backtracks it and says, well, I don't believe that they're being victimized again and again. It, it is the first time, but not again and again. She, 
really, uh, I mean, if you want to see an enabler, there it is. She goes on about, you know, the, 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 the defense, the defense of this case, they had like nothing to work with. They had nothing, you know, at the beginning, they were going to come in saying that they had a professional witness. Who did they bring at the end? They bring his mother. One person, his mother. The judge was having none of it. She's like, talk when 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 the defense attorney said, address the judge. The judge is going through the papers, like, I don't want to hear it. Can you imagine if you're 37 years old being locked up for this? You you were given a second chance, you violated again, and your mother is the only one that gets put on the stand in your defense. And it, it was put on the stand so that she can say the most, I mean, well, what kind of medications is he on? I'm, I'm really not sure. I have a list. I left it at home. A lady, your son's on trial now. <laughs> like, what? But uh, he has high blood sugar. Well, does he have diabetes? Is it diabetes one or two? Well, he's actually not diagnosed with diabetes, you know, but he, he has, has high blood pressure. Okay. Well, let's try it. Let's try something else that can maybe, he, he, he has sleep apnea. Hey, look, and, and there are doctors that believe I have sleep apnea and I have a therapist that says you probably have sleep apnea. And I, 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 I there, but man, if a sleep apnea can get you out of jail, good, good luck to you. He takes Entresto for his heart. He, he, he couldn't get a stint because he's too overweight. Well, he's had what we're in 2023, then 28. He's had how many years to lose weight? You're so concerned about his health. You're so concerned that he's going to die. Then, then maybe, maybe as a mother who has her son living, maybe you could have helped a little bit if you're so concerned. I get a mother's love for their child, but there's also a difference when you're enabling a child. That's not that's not real love. You're part of the problem. They're trying to like the jail wouldn't let him have his the right medication. He needs this brand and that brand. Really, that is that the best defense you can pull up? Okay. Now here, here's a, here, there were a few things that did bring up some real concern for me and maybe even for one day of a future appeal was, was when the first sergeant came on from the child exploitation unit. So the defense attorney said, do you, Maybe we can pull it up here. Maybe this is the sergeant. Do you know what a deep fake is? And he said, well, I've never heard of it. And that's like, how do you not, how are you in this field and, and claim to not have heard of a deep fake? Because it's, it, it should be common vernacular. And then he also asked him, have you heard of chat GPT? And he said, never. And again, if you're if you're in like the cyber crimes unit and you and you haven't heard of it. And when th then when they were asked, she came up, the prosecutor and said, well, in cases, well, no, or he went on to say, well, the cases are CGI, which is computer graphic generated. You know, it's like any fake movie that you see, but which is, the same thing as deepfake or as chat GPT, but this was done just, this hearing took place like 10 days ago and chat GPT has been in a South Park episode. It has been on every newspaper and magazine and news. It's just the talk of the town. Um, and so the idea that he said he never heard of it is to me concerning. It's, it's he should know. 
And you know, to, to, to another interesting point, let me show you this. This is a controversial thing here. Do you see this image of two of woman and a daughter? So this image won the the um it won the award. What was it called? Uh, it won. Oh, here it is. Prestigious award. Okay. The German artist Boris, uh, blah, 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 blah. He basically won an award for the best photo. This just happened recently. And after he won, he went out and said, I have to admit, I didn't take this photo. These people don't exist. I actually had nothing to do with it. I had an AI generated bot create this. Yeah, this is true. So it, these, and I use chat GPT and, and I'm trying to use it more, but it, it can, it can do anything. I, I have, um, there's a, a popular author author that, that has a following of several hundred thousand or maybe half a million people. And she writes like 12 books a year. And then one of her books, she had an AI bot write the whole book for her. She did some minor edits and boom, no one knew the difference. Bots can write code. They can do everything now. And yeah, they can create images that can fool everyone. So it's going to take some time for the world to catch up to this new technology, just always the way it works. And the last thing you want to have is someone to um, be able to appeal because the sergeant running the case didn't even know what it was that it existed. Now, of course, not for a second do I think that it was AI generated. And that's going to be a whole different world. I have no idea how, uh, how things are going to be approached when that gets that way. But I'm just saying I was surprised that he didn't know. And, and the defense attorney was also surprised. I'm sorry. Yeah. But he didn't make anything of it. <laughs> it was like, you know, the only thing maybe he was doing was trying to set up a potential appeal. I don't know. The other surgeon brought up how they got the devices. And by the way, Celebrate is a, a company that they use to crack open phones. I actually worked with Celebrate in 2012, 2013. I signed a contract with them. Uh, this was ba back before they had the, their contract to, to, to break into iPhones. I don't know if you guys remember, there was people, they're trying to break into an iPhone and there was a big deal. And then like w Apple wouldn't, said so they wouldn't do anything and then eventually this company actually an israeli company was able to to do it so yep and then um the end when the attorney gave his final speech wow i couldn't believe that it was it was shocking actually i really do there's something wrong with with his attorney i mean like what he said uh, can't really get in so you know we'll just Let's go back to this terrifying picture of our cockroach over here. So she said, I know the system is geared against it, as in chomos, cockroaches, people who harm children. I know the system is geared against it. Every Every time we talk about children, it gets everyone upset. Let's throw away the key. Let's, um, and I was like, what? That's your ending statement? Because we get upset that someone is trying to harm children, is harming children? Remember, he was arrested for
for soliciting a minor through a sting. Then he has one thing that he needs to do to stay out of prison. He wasn't even given a sentence. They gave him a blessing. They said, you know what? And he couldn't help it. He couldn't help it. He has a, an addiction. He has a disease. He, he's... And then the attorney says, everyone gets upset. So let's not get overexcited about this. How do you get up there and say that to defend, to defend, to defend really someone who, who's just, they're mentally ill. They're, and people need to be locked up if it's going to mean that it's going to protect our community, our children. He can't control himself. We see it all the time on, on, on my main channel. We have seen dozens and dozens and dozens of hearings of these roaches who get these little pat on the back sentences and go out and guess what? They harm a child. It needs to stop. And thankfully this judge threw the book at him, gave him the highest sentence recommended by the district attorney which I think was the highest allowed according for the crime that he had committed under Texas law. Well, again, it's, it's, uh, I think if anything, this is just proof that there's, they, they cannot control their urge and with everything on the line, their own freedom couldn't help it. Had to even have to download an image had to put it on his phone, had to load it later into the cloud. Unbelievable. Now, again, um, follow my main channel, Mandu. I'll leave the description below. This was designed as my backup channel, and I started doing alternative content like this. Um, none of it's monetized because it's it's Google. So, I mean, it's Google, it's YouTube. Well, same thing, right? But it's this type of hearings that they don't monetize it. Doing this really is the idea to just share the information to get it out there. Um, but uh, if you want to sub to my other channel, it's there's got like 600 or so uh, parole hearings. I cover Louisiana. Um, parole revocation hearings, commutation hearings, a lot of these cockroach chomo hearings. And um, it's not for the faint of heart though. But with that, I'll let you go.